Good day traders, this is Stefanos on behalf of Tixi and in today's webinar we'll be giving an outlook of the market for the week of the 12th until the 16th of September. First things first, looking at some of the highlights for next week, uh, in the stocks front we had one major stock upgrade which was 3M Corporation. Meanwhile on the Forex front things are going to be quite active as we'll be getting inflation updates by some of the world's largest economies, namely the US the UK and the EU as well, so definitely stay tuned. Uh, but first a disclaimer, as always, please know that all of the ideas discussed in the webinar are my own opinions and do not make up for any form of investment or trading advice, neither any recommendations to buy or sell. You should always do your own research and due diligence before buying or selling any securities, financial products or instruments and whether you use any kind of trading strategies. Any information that relates to past performance is not indicative of future results. Uh, so looking at stocks, as we mentioned during the intro, uh, we had one major upgrade on Friday, which was 3M Corporation. Now the stock was upgraded by UBS from a sell uh, to a neutral rating with the price target however remaining at $126. Uh, on your Tixi web trader you can just type in uh, the M, the letter M three times and you should be getting the stock in front of you uh, and we can just have a look at the chart at the same time. Uh, so like we said the, the stock price target was uh, was kept at $126 which is still $3 higher uh, than the current levels uh, so we could be looking at a retest, a retest back up towards these levels right here. Uh, now of course it doesn't mean just because UBS released this report that the stock is definitely going to make that move but looking at just the price action itself we are forming a hammer candlestick uh, which is pretty much at the bottom of what seems to be a downtrend at the lower time frame. So when we see this kind of candlestick pattern, it can signal a reversal or at the very least a correction. So we could very well see a retest um, back to the levels up here. But obviously we'll be seeing more of that next week uh, as the market opens. Now remember we won't have, uh, last week was a public holiday in the US on Monday. Whereas on this occasion we can pretty much potentially see uh, the effect of the stock upgrade as soon as Monday. Uh, but again, it depends what other reports we might get as well. We could get some further updates over the weekend. Uh, so I'd say just keep the stock on, on your watch list uh, just in case it decides to make any any strong movements. Again, be it on the upside or the downside. Uh, so yeah, this is with regards to stocks. Now I'm moving on to Forex, which is pretty much uh, what's going to be the important headlines for this uh, for this webinar. As we mentioned during the intro, we're going to have three major inflation reports, uh, which is going to be from the US, the UK and the EU. Of course, we're going to have more uh, more events as well, which is what we're going to be covering now as well. Uh, so you can very well see, you can find the economic calendar from Tix's website. All you need to do is just navigate to the news and analysis tab and just hit on the uh, economic calendar button here and you'll be presented with the actual economic calendar. Uh, from that point you can just use these filters uh, such as next week and we want the medium high impact events as well and it's crucial to just make note of the time zone and the hour uh, and the time right here because that's directly going to impact uh, the timings that you can see on the left right here as well so starting things off with monday we're going to be having gdp data from the uk and as you can see we have a flurry of uh, events being released from the uk pretty much at the same time uh, the gdp report is going to be the first uh, high impact event of the day and the week as well and as always make note of this little tool tip right here as it can give you the pretty good indication of the volatility you can expect in the hours following the release of the event uh, so yeah the gdp report uh, starting the th the week off and again we have a couple of more uh, events if you want to keep an eye on that as well but again they're all going to be released at the same time uh, so yeah the pound could be a currency to be keeping on watch round about at this time uh, then we're going to have inflation reports from some other uh, eu members as well uh, moving further down more inflation reports if you're more into trading exotic currencies uh, but it's also going to be uh let's see one it's going to be the fourth high impact event of the day so four high impact events alone on monday uh, moving on to tuesday we're going to be having 
uh, three high consecutive high impact reports from Australia. Uh, the first is going to be consumer confidence figures. Uh, and the third one as well. So three consumer confidence figures from Australia in general. Uh, then we're going to have employment data coming out of the UK at seven. And again, we're going to have four events being released at the same time uh, for the pounds. And then we're going to have inflation figures at the same time as the uh, UK reports. This time the inflation reports are going to be from the uh, from Germany. And then economic sentiment index from Germany at 10. And then moving to one of the uh, first inf major inflation reports, which is that from the US, which is going to be released at midday at 1.30, uh, with the core inflation figures being released. And you can see, we mentioned during the uh, the look back as well, if you were tuned for that, that the expectation was 8.1%. Uh, so it's going to be uh, the largest monthly decline since uh, the pandemic started, essentially. Uh, and then moving further down, we're, we're looking on to Wednesday now, have some, some further inflation reports on this occasion from uh, some Scandinavian countries, namely Finland and Sweden. And then it's going to be followed by the inflation report from the UK, which is the second one we mentioned uh, during the intro, again at 7 a.m. Uh, with a number of events being released at the same time. Uh, then we're going to have production figures from the US towards midday. And then to finish the day off, which is going to be uh, finishing the day in UK time, but obviously it's going to be we're going to be starting things off uh, in New Zealand. We're going to have GDP data uh, from New Zealand being released at 11:45 uh, UK time. And again, it's, this is why it's important to make note that you're looking at the correct uh, time zone. Uh, then in the morning hours of Thursday, have trade balance figures from Japan. Uh, and then unemployment data from Australia with another set of uh, events being released from uh, from Australia specifically. Uh, then towards the regular EU session, we're going to have inflation figures from uh, France and then followed by trade balance figures from the EU. Uh, towards midday, it's going to be, let's see here, the fourth high impact event of the day, which is going to be the retail sales figure uh, from the US. Uh, and then we're going to have some further trade balance figures this time from uh, from the US again. Uh, and then looking at uh, at Friday, we're going to have production data from China at 3 in the morning UK time uh, with the second high impact event of the day being retail sales figures from the UK. And again, just like it was with the previous events, we're going to have another set of events being released around about at the same time, which is pretty much similar uh, to one another. Uh, and then we're going to be looking at the third and last of the major inflation reports uh, from what we mentioned during the intro. And this time it's going to be from the EU, which is going to be released at 10 a.m. Uh, in the morning UK time. And then the last high impact event of the day and the week is going to be consumer sen sentiment data from the U.S. at 3 uh, in the afternoon UK time. Uh, so, yeah, these are pretty much the events with regards to the economic calendar which are likely to affect some of the major uh, currency pairs since we're looking at the calendar itself obviously let's not forget uh, about the uh, the regular weekly oil inventory report which is going to be released on the usual on wednesday as we can see from the day here and it's going to be at 3 uh, 30 uk time uh, now aside from the oil inventory report i would say it's also pretty crucial uh, to make note of the inflation report that we mentioned it's going to be released from the US uh, because that's obviously likely to impact not just oil uh, but gold prices as well uh, so yeah if you're going to be trading either of those two commodities or even both uh, definitely keep an eye on some of the inflation reports that are going to be released because you know they're not going to be just impacting the the forex market but it's likely to spill over into uh, the rest of the markets as well uh, so yeah definitely keep note of that uh, and lastly, let's just have a quick look at some of the cryptos and specifically uh, Bitcoin, which I have in front of me right now. As you can see, the uh, moving averages are still are at the same spot that they have been for the past couple of months, pretty much ever since the beginning of, of 2022. If you've been tuned in for the last couple of outlooks we've been uh, releasing or over the past few months, you'd be you have noticed that we've been looking at these sort of ranges uh, pretty much consistently. We can see that prices reached the level here that we had marked down ever since pretty much June. Uh, they're, they're making sort of a, of a reaction. If I switch on to the daily time frame, it's going to be even more pronounced. Uh, so you can see 
on Friday alone, uh, prices rose. You can see in the, if you're looking at this area right here, they rose by more than 10%, uh, which is a pretty uh, large increase in prices. On the weekly charts, obviously slightly less, but nevertheless, it's still up uh, by more than uh, six percent. Uh, this doesn't mean it's by by no means uh, a sign of a total reversal, uh, but we st we could still get uh, a little slight retest of these levels. You can see we first broke below it, we then retest and rejected off of it. So it looks like it could be like a midpoint between these two ranges, where either buyers or sellers are going to be fighting uh, for control. And depending on what prices do here, we could just see them moving back up higher and potentially staging a reversal or just rejecting again off of this level and just moving further lower. Whatever the case may be, obviously we have already highlighted our levels of interest. Uh, so definitely I would be personally looking at these levels when prices uh, come up into this area and start seeing what kind of reactions uh, prices are making. Uh, but yeah, this is as far as the uh, outlook uh, for next week. I hope you enjoyed the video and you find it useful and I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, trade safe.